Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, December 21st, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, ever wondered how you can uh, get a script to run whenever uh, someone changes a critical uh, file? There are, of course, some uh, fairly large uh, EDR solutions and such that do it, uh, but uh, Xavier is uh, introducing an interesting uh, tool that I actually didn't know about either that allows you to essentially schedule scripts similar to cron whenever a file is being opened or accessed or changed. Now, uh, this tool uh, ties into the iNotify API. That's a standard Linux API and tool is called in Cron or Ein Cron, I guess. Uh, that uh, tool uh, has a syntax and uh, works a little bit sort of like Cron, but of course, it doesn't uh, start scripts based on a particular timestamp, but instead, whenever a file is being accessed. And then uh, you can sort of make uh, particular conditions, like, uh, for example, if the file is deleted, if it's uh, moved, or uh, if the new file is created and such, or modified. So uh, that gives you some fine-grained control over when your script uh, runs. A pretty a neat tool, and uh, certainly helpful if you sort of quickly uh, need to watch a couple uh, critical files. And then other United Storm Center updates, uh, we do have uh, two new uh, lists of IP addresses uh, that uh, we started to maintain uh, yesterday. Uh, one is a list of IP addresses associated with Mastodon servers. The second one is a list of IP addresses associated with publicly advertised NTP servers. The Mastodon list is sort of interesting because now, of course, Mastodon is sort of the uh, big uh, talk these days. Uh, you may want to monitor if uh, someone is, for example, setting up a Mastodon server inside your network. Uh, that's sort of where this list uh, may come in handy. Or just if you see some odd traffic to from a particular IP address, uh, this will tell you, hey, uh, this IP address used by a Mastodon server, which may explain some of the traffic. Don't use the list as a block list. It's really just the IP addresses that the different uh, host names for the Mastodon servers that are publicly advertised resolve to. So I'm pretty sure there are some Cloudflare IP addresses and such in there. It certainly is not suitable as a block list. If you must block Mastodon for whatever reason, then block the domain names associated with it and they're easily retrievable. As far as the NTP servers go, well, uh, that's actually part of a larger project. Uh, we're going to start monitoring a little bit the performance of these NTP servers. For example, how close they keep time. These are many of these servers that are, for example, part of the pool.ntp.org uh, host name, but also other uh, similar sort of publicly advertised NTP servers. Again, if you see an IP address with some odd traffic, well, uh, maybe nice to know that this is a public NTP server. The URLs for these feeds uh, will uh, be in the show notes and uh, they're available in our usual formats like JSON, XML, Tap Delimited. I'll probably put the JSON URL in the show notes. And we also got a new episode of Packet Tuesday, episode six, if I count them correctly. And this one is about uh, the TLS server. Hello, Packet. And Google is planning an interesting change to Android fixing sort of a long-standing problem with TLS certificates in Android. Uh, so far, it hasn't been possible to independently update the root certificates that come with the Android operating system. That always required a complete operating system upgrade. And of course, in particular with Android, you often have phones that are no longer upgradable because uh, respective vendors uh, are no longer supporting the particular hardware. So uh, these users then tend to be stuck uh, with old root certificates, which for example, had been a problem uh, with Let's Encrypt at one point, And now again, with the Trust Core certificate no longer uh, being trusted uh, by Google. Well, uh, come Android 14, which is supposed to be released uh, late next year, 
it'll be possible to upgrade just the root certificate so that trusted certificate store without having to update the entire operating system. And Amazon a couple of months ago introduced a new feature allowing you to transfer an Elastic IP address. Elastic IP addresses can be assigned to a different uh, compute instances, for example, within AWS. But if you're moving, for example, that virtual server to a different account, you may want to move the IP address with it. Well, uh, the problem is that this gives, according uh, to Instant Response Company Mitiga, a couple new opportunities for attackers. An attacker could now also transfer these IP addresses to their account and with that, of course, control traffic to an from this IP address. I think the big lesson here is don't use IP addresses as an access control mechanism, in particular a cloud IP addresses, because they're just too ephemeral and uh, probably aren't going uh, to be static for a very long time anyway. So part of the reason for that transfer feature is actually because uh, people just fall into this trap. They set up access control rules based on IP addresses. And then, of course, they need to keep the IP address or they have to redo their access control. Well, and uh, finally, just a quick note, uh, Microsoft uh, fixed the Hyper-V problem that uh, arose from the last uh, monthly update. Uh, that caused you not to be able to create any new virtual machines. So if you ran into this problem, there is a new patch available for you. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and uh, thanks everybody who also is helping me promote uh, this uh, podcast. If you do have a minute, uh, or a second really if you could please go to your favorite podcast platform pretty much where you are listening to this podcast and well uh, give me that uh, five star rating uh, thanks and uh, talk to you again tomorrow bye